Isn't it strange that there are billions of us with distinct appearances, but we all have the same body outline? How do different body parts know where to form? Basically, how is the human body organized? To answer these, we can look at the most basic unit of life, the cell. A single cell multiplies and differentiates into many. Cells group together to form tissues and then organs. These organs come together to form organ systems, finally forming the human body. The phenomenon behind this is known as positional information. To understand this better, imagine an empty room with a few people standing at different points. How can their positions be specified? If a perfume bottle is opened near a wall, it spreads across the room with different concentrations at different points. We can say that the strength of perfume can specify people's positions. How is this relevant to our discussion? Here, perfume corresponds to morphogens in human body. Morphogens are signaling molecules secreted by a group of cells and spread out in a graded manner. By sensing concentration of morphogen around them, cells can determine their position with respect to the source of morphogen and also their functions. For example, arm development begins with just a group of cells bulged out from the fetus. During this process, morphogen is secreted at the bottommost part of the bulge. The cells sensing the strongest concentration of morphogen form the little finger. Sensing the lowest amount become the thumb. But is this process of development an infallible one? When it disrupts, it brings up some abnormalities such as extra, short or joint fingers or finger-like thumb. There are multiple reasons behind these defects, disrupted morphogen distribution being one of them. Treating such abnormalities requires us to first understand how the system works. Experimenting on humans is not a feasible option. Hence, model organisms are used. They are nothing but some non-human species used in labs to help scientists understand biological processes. The lab of Dr. Richard Ricci at Iser Pune studies similar phenomenon of morphogen distribution in fruit flies. Let's get to know more about it. So the mother fly deposits a morphogen and this morphogen uh, is deposited at the egg side and it diffuses or flows across this egg in a graded fashion and therefore the uh, cells get to know where they are. Are they near the head or are they near the tail? Uh, in the limb development, when our hands are formed or uh, in the rib cage development, how, uh, how the, the, the spinal cord is formed. So all these uh, are dictated by morphogens. So once we study and find out that morphogens are impacted by things which are intracellular or extracellular in the way they diffuse in the fruit fly for example. What we are studying in the lab and what my work relates to is actually the fact that uh, if there are obstacles or hindrances which are created by intracellular or extracellular uh, components of the cell, how will the spread of this bicoid gradient change? So, um, so what we have found out is that uh, for example, if you remove the actin architecture uh, in the egg, then the bicoid gradient seems to spread a little further. The implication of this study is that once we understand how these gradients form and what all components contribute to how they diffuse and how they spread, then we can apply this knowledge to any other system, say for humans or any other systems where, for example, we know that the human hand is formed because of uh, gradients, morphogen gradients. So if we know that gradients are affected by certain components, then we can know that what components will affect and if they are not present, then what diseases they lead to.